I'm Jim Codrington. We're here at Butler Street CME in downtown Atlanta to help them remodel their pulpit. This large church has a small cramped pulpit that needs to be expanded and can use some additional lighting. So over the next 48 hours, we're going to lend the congregation a helping hand to give their building a divine restoration. It's divine. It's divine. Restoration. It's divine. one of Atlanta's oldest churches. It's on the National Registry of Historic Buildings and its unique architecture has been well preserved. From the outside, it is imposing, but on the inside, they need some elbow room. The Butler Street congregation hosts many important speakers, but this beautiful old building isn't well suited for it. The altar is just too small for all the joyful sounds produced here each Sunday. Pastor Alford, here is Jim, the man with the measuring tape. Hey, Jim, how are hey, you doing Pastor, this morning? Good, how are you doing? Good to see you. Oh, wow. Just Fall up those trying to get the lay of the land I am here. already starting to get yeah. the uh, picture here. This is really, really tight. Yeah, yeah, it is. If I'm standing here preaching, the difficulty is people passing by. Yeah, yeah another pastor behind. comes through yeah. here yeah. for yeah. service. Like, yes, and it's I'm like, sorry, oh, I just excuse need me. to go just over just here. And then, oh, I forgot something, oh, and then, oh, right, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, get, oh, And oh, you can oh, see oh. the congestion. Um, <laughs> exactly. One of the things that's uh, greatly needed is to be able to open the area up. Absolutely. So we can have more room to more easily accommodate movement and flow yeah. in this area. And I can imagine even if someone's seated here while someone's speaking there. Yeah, really, if you're seated here, you almost have to kind of sit you know, knees wide open I believe uh, in order to accommodate passage, so it makes it very difficult. And a very tall person, of course, their knees are bumping up against who's ever standing here. Right. And you're, uh, you know, admiring the fabric of the back of your exactly. head. <laughs> exactly. 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 Well, we think we have an idea about what we can do. What we thought we could do is bring the pulpit platform out five feet. Okay. And then bring the altar uh, level out six feet. Okay. Another thing I've noticed is that the lighting isn't that great up here. The, uh, the lighting is really very bad, and uh, light would just be such a massive help to us mm -hmm. if uh, additional lighting could be made available. We're Absolutely. definitely going to do that. Really? We're going to put some track lighting on the walls, as well as when the whole this whole area gets pushed out, those lights can be focused here on the pulpit for you oh. to improve your reading. Now, based on everything that you've told me, how long is this going to take? 48 48 hours. hours. The church has lined up a lot of volunteers, but we've got a long to-do list. The old chairs and chancel rail need to be sent out for reupholstering. But the big challenge will be coordinating the delivery of all the building materials over the next 48 hours. Find out what's holding this railing down. How are we gonna do choir rehearsal? Oh, what time's choir rehearsal? It's at seven o'clock tonight. Cause this is not gonna be place that would be appropriate for that. Have you got any other spaces that are close by? I suppose I could have you carry the organs and the piano uh, <laughs> over to another place in the church and we could do that. The carpet. Do you think this was the contrasting kind of shade he was talking about? <laughs> the old carpet was covering up what looks like the original carpeting. What a mess. This church was built around 1920. It looks like we got all the original under padding. Look at these steps here. They're, they're black. Yeah, it's it looks like nice paint. wood, actually. Mm -hmm. This congregation has been in downtown Atlanta for more than a century and takes its role in this community very seriously. We're here with Michelle Peltier. You've been doing some pretty exciting program here. Yes. We have over 52 ministries. Uh, one that uh, we're most proud of is our food and clothing bank. And every Tuesday morning, uh, we serve the community in terms of getting them the needed clothes with a referral and the needed food. Mm -hmm. And we're just so very proud of it. We were thinking it might be a neat little bonus, Pastor Alford, if we actually did a little work out here. Oh, okay. And what we're thinking of is just uh, painting the walls, Okay. Just one little paint job and replacing this uh, carpet with a carpet that's actually going to match the sanctuary. What do you think? Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, could you guys help me out with do. that? Sure no problem. Exactly. You got it. I'll leave uh, it in your capable exactly. hands. Coordinate with the carpet inside. It will set it completely off. 
it's really going to be something to get this done in 48 hours, but mm -hmm. it can be done. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Got okay. okay. it. Before we can start on the new structure, we've got to clean this down to the original frame to see what we've got to work with. Okay. What we've got here are chancel rails, so I'm removing this. We're going to take them right out. They're going to be reupholstered. So I'll just get the last one off here. There we go. This has already taken half a day and we haven't built anything yet. Okay guys, what do you think? Can we do one in 48 hours? What do you think? We're in downtown Atlanta helping Butler Street Church rebuild the front of their sanctuary. It's halfway through day one, and Jim and the volunteers have got the old space cleared off. The lumber has just arrived, so they can start on the new frame. Okay, all right, y'all can pull off now. But they've only got a day and a half left before Sunday service. Thanks to these beautiful stained glass windows, the body of the church is filled with natural light, but underneath the overhang of this balcony is significantly darker, and the existing fixtures aren't providing near enough light. Now the good news is, we don't need to rewire. We just need to find fixtures that will provide enough light and fit in with the existing decor. Well, we've got a lot of volunteers, but I see this all the time. Everyone wants to be a supervisor. I just have to remind them how little time we have left. On any project, and particularly one with this many hammers swinging, you've got to constantly be checking for level. Now, one common mistake, this spirit of level will give you level for this four foot span. You've got to go all the way along. Make sure it's level all the way along. Another common mistake, this is level, this is plumb. Speaking of level, somehow the new stage is slanted. A slight adjustment and we're back on track. I'm gonna have to say you work for the Department of Corrections. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Melvis Atkinson was a mathematics professor. And I still remember the Pythagorean theorem. I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Maybe don't I'll worry. find a use one day for that one. Um, tell me about your years as, as a teacher. Well, I taught on the college level and having to work with young people really kept me young. I enjoyed that, especially working with the freshmen because they would come in with such different ideas and new ideas from different backgrounds that made it very pleasant to work with them. So do you bring that here to the church in some way? Yes, uh, I'm director of Christian education, so we're working with the Christian, the education program with our young people, and uh, I'm using it that way. Wonderful. And can you tell me about what's going on behind us? It's an um, uh, incredible transformation already. Oh. Why is this so important to have this done at this church? Oh, this is great for us, and it really will be beneficial to the young people in the church, and I guess to the congregation also, because we have a dance group here. Oh, okay. And when they had been performing, if you're sitting in the back, you can't get to see everything that they're doing. So now with them on stage, everybody will be able to see them. Hit that. Child! Don't hit it fast, because some of y'all are halfway there. To receive that. Don't get excited by the cameras, OK? They're going to have a whole lot to bleep out on <laughs> To receive that. Try that. To The choir here at Butler Street is amazing, and they put a lot of energy into their performances. And it's not just the choir, the dance group really rocks too. Oh, we're done. No, no, no. <laughs> OK. We're going to start from the start from okay. beginning.
Pastor Alford, tell me about the age of this church. We came to this location at the turn of the century and a building was actually built here. Uh, that building was destroyed by fire in 1919 and this structure that we're standing in now was built on the ruins of the original church structure that was here. Okay. Uh, so the building is very solid because it almost has a double foundation downstairs and we discovered some of that when we did some renovations seven or eight years ago. Interesting. The building is actually listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, which is something that we're quite proud of here at Butler Street. Very nice. It has some beautiful stained glass windows in here as well. They're gorgeous. Tell me about, um, you have a Timothy? The Timothy, Timothy House. House yes. The Timothy House is an after-school tutorial program for children at risk. Uh, we work with a local school that's uh, a few blocks from here and have kind of adopted that school as our corporate partner to make certain that we do everything we can to influence the lives and educational and acad academic development of youth who are at risk in falling behind in basic reading skills, in mathematics, in social uh, interaction skills. So so that we can do everything to make them feel good about themselves and to succeed in school. Wonderful. Here at the church. As we look behind us here, mm -hmm. we can see a whole lot of development. What do you think about what's gone on so Things far? Things are beginning to take shape. Uh, this time yesterday, I wondered uh -huh. if they would be able to take shape. We're glad that they are. Um, it's going to present uh, just a real new sense of restoration uh, to the congregation. And I'm looking forward to this Sunday being able to stand and proclaim the word of God from that place. Right, and you're going to have a whole lot of more space around about you that? this time. How about that? Yes, we will. <laughs> now, we're still on track for 48 hours? We are still on track. There's a few little glitches. We're waiting on some carpet and things like this. Okay. But, uh, you know, we got to keep moving on, and hopefully those things will fall into place by the end. Well, we will together petition the divine deliverer who will make certain that all of this happens. Let's do that. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> There's a great team of volunteers painting the lobby. The rollers are just flying. And in the sanctuary, we've finally got all the hammers swinging in time. This is Willis McKee. Now, Willis, how long have you been a congregant here? I've been a member here for about 30 years. You look like a builder by trade by any chance, sir? Well, I'm a chief engineer by trade. Well, you're a good man to have on the job, that's for sure. Framing's come along nicely. We're just framing the floor now. We're hanging these joists using these handy dandy joist hangers. Basically, you just hammer them in and then sit the joists right in there. Gotta get back to work. So. Hey, Jim, this is really coming along. Yeah, now this is the messiest part of the room. The carpenters are working away. Now we only have two problems. Okay. The carpet still hasn't arrived. No. Oh and this central pew here. Uh, what about it? Well, we're thinking of moving it. Oh, you can't move the pew. <laughs> the congregation really wants it to stay where it is, and in fact, we promised them that after the expansion, there'd be enough room for it to stay where it is. Yeah, but I don't think there's gonna be enough space for them to be comfortable. You're right, comfort is an issue, yeah. but so is their happiness. It's Saturday, day two at Butler Street Church in downtown Atlanta. We're working with them to rebuild the front of the sanctuary and we've only got 19 hours left to get it done before Sunday service. Things are moving along nicely, but with a few concerns, we've almost finished framing the upper riser, but we still have to lay down the plywood. The electrics are roughed in and Jim Cotton, the electrician, is installing the lighting, but we still have to build out the lower riser and that's gonna take some doing and there's no sign of the carpeting. So Catherine, where did this light come from? Well, it came from uh, one of our sponsors. What do you think? It's supposed to be clear. Why? It's frosted. Okay, so what's the difference? Well, we want to make sure that it emits a great portion of light. It still is. Even though it's frosted, you're just not going to see the bulb itself, but it's still going to give off a lot more light. I mean, right now, the box that's there, it's covered in on the side, so you're missing on, out on all that light. So this is great. It's going to be nice. What do you think about the color and everything else? Now, don't try to steamroll me now. I think the color's <laughs> nice, but I want the light. It's going to work. OK, I'm placing my faith in you. Yeah. All right. Don't you have something to do? I do. In fact, I'm about to go do it right now. OK, well, Alrighty. we'll see you later. All right. Bye-bye.
Well, we needed to move that front pew anyway to make room. I haven't told Catherine yet, but wow, lifting a 500 pound pew is no small feat. Even with all the volunteers to help, it's still a huge effort. So on the whole, I would say it was an entertaining experience, but I wouldn't want to do it again. So let's get back to work. The way in which uh, you came to this church, Tony, is, is a really, really strong story. Mm. Tell me about your journey. Well, it all started in high school, I guess. Um, I somehow ended up around being around the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. and, it's easy uh, to do, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean you're, you, can, you go to school and basically that crowd just, it's just something that excites you about that crowd. And at that point in time, that's where I knew that wasn't me. This is not me and I need to get away. Well, and your mother was also a big influence oh, on definitely. you coming to this church. Tell us about that. Oh, definitely. Um, actually, it took her passing for me to come to this church. Uh, she died in June, June 24, 2002. I immediately joined the church thinking I was going to back her legacy. But once you come into the church, you see all the great people that, that's at this church and you see the great things that the pastor's doing. And you just, I just learned how to love how to give and things of that nature. I mean, the church is just filled with great, great people. What happened to the front pew? It's gone. Oh, we had to take it out. Does the congregation know about this? Well, I consulted with Sony and some of the church members. And... I've talked to a lot of people who feel very strongly about that pew. Well, I'm sure they'll be very happy with the result. I hope you're right. Yeah. Finally, the frame is taking shape, but still no sign of the new carpeting. Going pretty good, huh? Yeah, that thing is it's nice. Uh, yeah. The stage reminds me of the time that we had our play here. We had to build a stage similar to this. Are we you had, kidding? Yeah. You already built a stage? Yeah, we extended the stage out. We had a play called A Stranger. Uh, there's a stranger in town, do you know him? Oh, yeah? And um, we used this part of the pool pit, and we extended the pool pit out, made a stage, and we just did a play. Just temporarily? Yeah, temporarily. OK, but now we're doing the real thing. Wow, sure is bright enough in here now, huh? Yeah, I think those lights were really the right choice. Bright enough to see all the cleaning up we need to do for Sunday. Yeah, and do you happen to have a couple hundred square feet of carpet? <laughs> It's Sunday morning at Butler Street Church in Atlanta. We've spent the last two days rebuilding the front of the sanctuary, adding new lighting, and repainting the lobby. The new carpet for the altar finally arrived an hour ago, just as the sun was coming up. And it looks like we'll be done before anyone arrives for Sunday service. The new coat of painted carpet has really refreshed what felt like a tired old lobby. Just a few last minute touches and this restoration is complete just in time. Now this church has stage presence. With 11 feet of additional space, the altar and pulpit platforms are less congested for movement and seating. The enlarged space has new track lighting to illuminate the pulpit and the beautiful new carpeting. The reupholstered chairs have a fresh new look and the banister completes this transformation, integrating the old with the new. It's almost time for service. I can't wait to see Pastor Olford's reaction. We've worked pretty hard the past couple of days trying to keep him away. Eh, it didn't always work. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's Day. Join with the celestial voices of antiquity as we all worship together our Lord in this place.
We're delighted this afternoon to have been honored as a church by divine restoration and restored we have become. Energy and excitement has filled this place all week long as volunteers by the scores have come to this place to make what you see today possible. Join with me. Walking. <laughs> As you make your way out of the sanctuary, please take note of the new lighting under the balcony, the new lighting in the vestibule, the track lighting that is inside, the arches up here, so that you might see all that is available. God bless you. Take the name of Jesus with you. You enhance the, the entire church. Thank you so very much. Yeah, I did have a little doubt. I had a little doubt. Of yeah. Why, yeah. You did a beautiful job with the Chancellor Rail. Everything just, just looked grand, and, and I just applaud everything. It's much more comfortable. I can turn around without bumping into anybody, and uh, it just makes it great. I enjoy it very much. Wonderful. And it's beautiful. How long have you been coming here? 50 years. 50 years? Yes, and I'm 85. Well, it was a wonderful addition to our, our service and our spirit, and we just thank you all so very much. It's amazing how a little space can make such a big difference. Yeah, that and some new lighting. New carpet. Safer stairs. Upholstered chairs. Happy congregation. <laughs> well, you know what? Don't get too comfortable, Jim. It's time for us to move on to our next restoration.